Hey, Tennessee, John Gentry. I'm starting a revolution, but not by taking up arms. I'm starting a remonstrance revolution, restoring our most powerful constitutionally protected right, our right of petition by address or remonstrance. In this revolution, the Tennessee Constitution is our shield and our armor, and the Declaration of Rights therein is our sword. In the Tennessee Constitution, Article 1, Section 1, that all power is inherent in the people, and all three governments are founded on their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, and happiness. For the advancement of those ends, they have at all times an unalienable, indefeasible right to alter, reform, or abolish the government in such manner as they may think proper. So unalienable, that means that this right cannot be sold and it cannot be transferred. And indefeasible means that it cannot be violated under any pretense, whatever. It doesn't matter if you're one citizen petitioning for redress of grievance or if you're 10,000 citizens demanding term limits. This right is unalienable and indefeasible and cannot be, be violated under any pretense. I don't want to alter the government. And I certainly don't want to abolish the government. Our government is set forth in our Tennessee Constitution, and the founders did a wonderful job of establishing our form of government. But unfortunately, our government no longer adheres to the provisions and the mandates that are required in the Tennessee Constitution. If we look to Section 2 of Article 1, that government being instituted for the common benefit the doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. It would be absurd for me not to protest unlawful conduct of the government. It would be slavish uh, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind for me to sit idle just as it is the same of you. It is destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. If we look to Article 11, Section 16 of the Tennessee Constitution, the Declaration of Rights hereto prefixed is declared to be a part of the Constitution of this state and shall never be violated on any pretense whatever and to guard against transgression of the high powers we have delegated we declare everything in the Bill of Rights contained is accepted out of the general powers of the government and shall forever remain inviolate. We all know state or local official corruption to some extent, whether the all too common corrupt judge or the occasional law enforcement officer or child protective service worker or legislators who have no regard for constitutional provisions or their oaths of office, regardless of your concern <clears throat> excuse me, about government, if you want to join me in restoring our constitutional rights, restoring constitutional mandates, drop a comment in this video that you want to stand with me reach out to me via private message or email and tell me that you want to stand with me. I'm going to switch over to my computer screen and I'm going to share with you and I'm going to walk you through this process. Historically, uh, how our, our fathers and, and previous generations exercised this right and how the government used to perform its duty and how we're going to restore this right of the people. All right, so let me walk you. Let me walk you through this process. Uh, it is it is not complicated. It was not intended by the founders uh, to be complicated, and and the process is is clearly laid out. So I'm going to share my screen with you here, uh, so you can see what I'm looking at, and I'm going to walk you through what's been going on and historically how this happened. So uh, this first one, uh, this, is, this is the announcement of, of my petition of remonstrance. Just as a citizen, 
uh, I approached the government and said, you know, the judiciary is corrupt uh, and we need some reforms. So here was the here was the announcement of mine. Next order, Mr. Clerk. Petitions and memorials. Mr. Clerk. Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Rule 15, we have a brief statement regarding a petition of remonstrance statement filed by Representative Holsey. It reads, I'm approaching the Tennessee House Chief Clerk on behalf of Mr. John Gentry with this petition and statement. Involves a petition of grievances. One, unconstitutional and void statutes. Two, failure to address grievances. Three, judicial reform. Four, reinstitution of constitutionally guaranteed rights. Signed, Bud Halsey, Tennessee State Representative. So that was that was that was my uh, remonstrance that was announced uh, before the entire uh, Tennessee House. Hi, I'm Rex Moore with the Motley. Just one citizen uh, uh, exercising my my constitutional right. So where does this? We're, uh, let's let's look at let's look at this right. Uh, so this is the this is the Tennessee Constitution, and let's go down to Article One, Section Twenty Three. So uh, here it says that uh, get this lined up. Let me drop this down just a little bit. So citizens have a right to apply to those invested with the powers of the government for redress of grievance or other proper purpose. So it doesn't have to be a grievance. And a grievance is oppression of rights uh, or discrimination, according to Black's Law Dictionary. Uh, so, so we can petition for redress of grievance or other proper purpose uh, by address, and this says of remonstrance. And if you look at my other videos, it's actually or remonstrance. And, and the government uh, refuses to correct this. Uh, I've shown it on the digitized image. Uh, it says by address or remonstrance, meaning we have a choice. We can address them orally, uh, or we can do it in a, in a formal written protest. So this is a constitutional right that we have. It is clear in the Tennessee Constitution. This is a right of the people. And it is, this right is more powerful than the right to bear arms or the right of free speech. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, with, with my petition that went in there, and if people once again uh, started exercising this right, this is the voice and the power of the people to control our government and ensure that they maintain and, and stay within the confines uh, and the restraints of, of the Constitution. So that's where the right comes from. Article one, section one, Declaration of Rights, section 23. So let's look at, at historically. So this is, uh, this is the 1831 House Journal. You can go down to the Tennessee archives and, and look this up yourself. Uh, the, the chief legislative librarian, uh, Vince McGrath is extremely helpful down there and he can take you right to this book but it's on the sacks uh, in there and you can see it. So inside of that book, uh, this, is, this is what, page 282 uh, inside of that book. Uh, so this was Wednesday, December 7th, 1831. Mr. Hurst presented a petition of Alan Jack praying for a divorce. So Mr. Hurst was a member of the House of Representatives. He was a representative. And uh, they decided after he presented that petition to refer it to the Committee on Divorces. Uh, Mr. Claiborne, another representative, he presented a petition of Baptist McCombs and others. And that petition was referred to the Committee of Claims. And Mr. Hardin presented a petition of Joseph Nolan, praying the passage of an act authorizing him to hawk and pedal. And that was referred to the Committee of Propositions and Grievances. And this part is important, Mr. McGahee from the Committee of Propositions and Grievances, I assume he was the chairman of that committee in 1831, made a report upon the petition of sundry citizens of Franklin County praying for the passage of an act authorizing them to raise a certain sum of money by lottery for the purpose of erecting a female academy in said county. And the resolution contained therein was concurred in the House as follows to wit, 
resolved that the prayer of petitioner ought not to be granted. So, uh, and, and just as an aside, you know, gambling and lottery uh, was unconstitutional. Uh, they knew it was a bad idea back then. And so they said, no, we're, we're not going to, even though it's for a good cause uh, to erect a female academy, no, you can't do it. Uh, but what we see, what we see from this is we see members pre presenting petitions on behalf of individual citizens, as well as groups of citizens. And what we see here um, is that the, the, the full house, you know, heard these petitions and then decided what committee to refer them to, like the no longer existent Committee of Propositions and Grievances or the non-existent Committee on Claims. Uh, this was how we sought redress of grievance, is it went to uh, the, petition, the, the Committee of Propositions and Grievances or it went to uh, the Committee on Claims. We need to restore those committees. Um, and then we can see uh, that the committees considered these and then made recommendation to the full house. And then uh, where it says, and the resolution contained therein was concurred in by the house. That means the committee reported back to the full body of the house and then the house voted on it. Uh, so this was, the, this was the process back in 1831. Now, this is my, this is my petition of remonstrance. I'm, I'm demanding on behalf of all Tennesseans uh, to uh, my, you know, you heard mine in the announcement. Uh, it's for unconstitutional and void statutes. Those statutes protect corruption, uh, especially of the judiciary. Uh, the, the failure to address grievances that petitions are no longer heard. And I want judicial reform and I want constitutionally guaranteed rights uh, reinstituted. So mine is, mine is complicated, 70, 72, 72 page uh, remonstrance on this thing. So it's, and I'm going against the judiciary, so I'm fighting a bunch of corrupt attorneys in black robes. Um, so I have to be you know, pretty spot on with my argument. So mine 72 pages, this, this thing is a, is a beast, but they don't need to be that complicated. Uh, this, is a, this is a petition uh, from 1801, and this was by this was by Jesse Gentry, and I have my my fifth great grandfather uh, was a was a Tennessee pioneer. His name was Jesse Gentry. I presume there wasn't a lot of Jesse Gentrys in 1801, so I think this was my my fifth great grandfather uh, that did this. Um, but this is just very simple. Uh, 1801, to the, to the Honorable General Assembly of the State of Tennessee now sitting, whereas your humble petitioner humbly showeth that he was so unfortunate as to, as to become lack for the appearance of a certain something uh, at, at a superior court of law, and failing to appear, uh, he came forfeited for the sum of $100 which was a lot of money uh, back in 1801. And so he was asking the General Assembly to reconsider what the court had ordered. So this, this was just, you know, that was his petition in 1801. It was that simple. Uh, you know, here, here are the facts. Uh, here's the, the redress that I wanted. That's all a petition is. And, and the Tennessee General Assembly has a duty um, this is in uh, this is in the uh, house. This is in the House Rules of Order, Rule 15, and it's very similar in the Senate uh, Rules of Order 22. Uh, that uh, a, before a petition shall be received and read at the table. So shall that means they have a duty. Shall creates a duty for them. Shall be so before a petition shall be received and read at the table a brief statement shall be filed with the clerk. So you go to your representative and you present them you know, with a petition. You also have a constitutional right to address them or, or you can ask a member. Um, if, if the House and Senate rules of order don't address something before the body, they refer to Mason's Manual of Legislative Procedure in Tennessee. 
And in Mason's manual, section 148, I believe, it says that petitions are presented by the petitioner or by a member. Uh, so you can ask your member, if you don't feel comfortable addressing them, you can ask a member to address them. So this, this I believe, uh, no, I don't, I, I know it in my heart that that when this right is restored, it is going to lead to a great healing of this nation. It is going to restore the voice and the power of the people in our government. Our legislative houses no longer listen to citizens. They listen to lobbyists. They listen to special interests. Very seldom do they present bills and never do they consider, not since mine, not since the year 1801 do they consider petitions or remonstrances. Uh, I believe and I know in my heart when this right is restored and the voice and the power of the people in the government is restored to address them, to remonstrate to them and have that remonstrance read, uh, that, that is, you know, Supreme Court said the crucial prophylactic aspect of justice cannot occur in any covert manner or in any dark corner. When these petitions and remonstrances are presented and they are in live stream recorded proceedings available on demand, government's going to start to act right. They're going to start to adhere to the provisions of the Constitution. So I'm asking you, uh, and let me let me share my screen again, and I'm going to show you this. This is our our first step of of what we need to do. I'm going to bring up my website here. Uh, it's we the people v 50com So coming up. So this is my website. If you go to resource documents, uh, which is a page on my website. You'll see I have memorial and remonstrance, right of petition, and I have a co-signature, uh, a co-petitioner signature page. I want you guys to download this, print it off, sign it, get it back to me. You can take a picture of it to, to, and send it to me from your phone, private message. You can email, scan it, and email a copy to me. I intend to present the General Assembly with thousands of signatures that this constitutionally guaranteed right that is fundamental. The Supreme Court of the United States has said fundamental to a Republican form of government is the right of petition. Uh, we must restore this right. Uh, we, have, we have been deceived. We have been kept ignorant that we have this constitutional right. You saw me as a single citizen with mine addressed before the entire Tennessee House of Representatives. Uh, so I want people to, to start exercising this right. I want us to take control of our government and restore a proper government and hold the state and county and local officials uh, to, the, to the requirements of the Tennessee Constitution. So thank you uh, so much for taking, my, taking time with me. This is a revolution. I am leading this revolution and I'm asking you to stand with me. Uh, and help me restore this constitutionally protected right. Uh, thank you for your time. God bless, Godspeed, and in God we trust.